In this lesson, we're going to get rid of the base class that handles our property change notifications. We're going to replace it with a NuGet package that automatically raises the notifications for all properties in a class. This is going to eliminate something I really don't like about the current base notification class. Right now, our models and view models inherit from it. It uses it as a base class. And a base class for inheritance is normally used when you want to get a more specific type of something. Uh, for example, we have our living entity base class that has the player and monster classes as children because they're more specific versions of a living entity. But our models and view models really aren't more specific versions of a base notification class. That doesn't really make sense. We're just doing that because we want all the models and view models to have the functionality from there, and that's kind of the best way we have to do it. But it's really not a clean way. And what we're going to do is replace the base notification class with a NuGet package. I know a lot of times we developers don't like to use NuGet packages and other libraries and frameworks. Uh, we, have, we suffer from the not invented here syndrome. We kind of think, well, I, I need to do my special version and I need to make sure it's right. But a lot of times that produces code that is buggy or takes a long time to develop. In fact, I worked at one company where a developer spent a month doing a deep cloning library. After spending a month developing it, it still had bugs that we had to fix. And the worst part is we were already using a library in that project that would do very stable deep copies, a thoroughly tested library that could have been done with two lines of code. So something to keep in mind is as a programmer, our job is to deliver some functionality, whether it's a game, a business program, whatever. Our job is not to necessarily write every line of code in the program. We want to use stable frameworks, stable libraries, stable NuGet packages. That lets us develop faster and deliver faster, which makes our users happier faster. The NuGet package I'm going to use is called FODY, F-O-D-Y. It's kind of a framework for code weaving. What it does is when you compile your solution, when you build it, it injects some things in the compiled code for you automatically. In this case, it's going to inject all that property notification code. So let's open up the solution. And the first step is to go into the solution, manage the NuGet packages, and you're going to want to browse for FODY, F-O-D-Y. This FODI NuGet package you want to install to the engine, the SOS CS RPG models, and SOS CS RPG view models projects. Uh, we need to have it in engine right now because we haven't moved everything over yet. Then you'll also need to install the individual FODI feature. In this case, we want the property changed one. There are other features for things like uh, automatic logging of functions, automatic uh, time recording of you know, how long it takes the function to run, a lot of other things you can do with FODI. But we want the property change dot FODI in the engine, SOSCS RPG models, and SOSCS RPG view models projects. Next, we need to go into those three projects and we need to add a FODI weavers.xml file. This is kind of a configuration file, so FODI knows which, uh, which of its sub-features is installed. And in this case, it's the property changed one. So you just want this XML file in the engines project, in the soscsrpg.models project, and in the soscsrpg.viewmodels project. The next step is to go into the engine project and delete base notification class.cs. And the final step is to go into all of our classes that were inheriting from base notification class and now get them so they use FODI. These are going to be both of our view models and a few of our models. In each of these classes, we're going to have to add using system.component model. And we're going to go from the class inheriting from base notification class to the class implementing I notify property changed. When FODI sees this, the, the class implements I notify property change, then it's going to weave in or inject its 
property change notification code at compile time. Then we also need to add a public event for the property changed event handler. And the third thing we'll need to do for the classes is in the setters where we used to call on property change function that was in the base notification class, we need to delete all those. And if you notice, uh, we can add some messages here that we can convert these properties to auto properties now. We're going to do that in the next step. Uh, one important thing with refactoring is you don't want to start doing too many things before you commit. We're going to make one small change, test it, commit, make the next small change, test it, commit. Uh, otherwise, I've seen this and I've done this myself where you make a change and then you say, oh, well, I'll make this little change after that. Oh, and while I'm in here, I'll make this little change. And the next thing you know, you've made eight changes. Your program suddenly stops working and you don't know which of the eight changes broke it. And you don't have a good way to revert just that one change. So instead, we make a little change, test, commit, and then repeat. So after we've, we've fixed the grouped inventory item, we need to go into living entity and do the same thing. Add the using directive for system component model. Change from having the base notification class as the parent to implementing this I notify property changed. Add the public event for the property changed event handler. And then go into all of our setters and delete the on property changed calls. In the player class, all we have to do is delete the on property change calls because the player still inherits from living entity and living entity, as we see, we fix that so that Fody will know to do the property changed events. And it's also smart enough to know that for the child classes to do the property changed events. So all we need to do in the player class is get rid of the on property change call inside the setter. In the player attribute class, we need to do the same standard change. Using system component model, I notify property changed, add the event handler, and delete the calls to on property changed. Same with quest status. And in our view models for a character creation view model, we do the same thing. And we repeat that for the game session view model. Now that we've done that, let's clean the solution just for to be extra safe and rebuild it. And let's run the game and make sure the notifications are actually happening. We'll start a new game. Let's change the race. So we'll notice here the strength was 12 and the modified is 12. If we change it to orc, the modified changed. And this was being done by the property change notification, so we know that's working there. And if we go to the game and we move, we see our location is updating. Uh, let's try using a recipe. Our inventory updated. If we attack a snake, our hit points are changing. So it looks like our property change notification is working. That's going to be it for this lesson. Uh, I think the next one's going to be pretty quick. We're going to just clean up some of these properties now that we don't have to have the property change notification code in there. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment under the video or on the support page, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible.